G'day and welcome to the Infos. I'm Execute, joined today by Astropub and Space Tomato. And we're officially welcoming, for the first time, Space Tomato as an Infra Honor. And we're also, as a surprise, uh, this one is actually being recorded in front of a live studio audience um, and being mm -hmm. streamed on both their channels at the same time. And uh, this episode today was actually worked on by the chat, uh, by the endeavors, the supporters and all that, and we got let them vote on what they wanted to vote on, and this was the the highest one that they voted on, and so we thought we'd do it an episode. And that episode is now called The Future of Cargo Hauling. Um, before we get started, though, um, remember we're doing the giveaway for hashtag Jaden um, because uh, Jaden unfortunately passed away, or his name was Eric. He unfortunately passed away, um, and his mate is wanting to give away um, the F7A upgrade and a Super Hornet with it. And so that'll go to if you leave a comment, uh, uh, subscribe, and leave a comment, um, we'll eventually give that away. All right, Paul, take us away since you're driving today. I'm driving this this bus, um, this crazy bus oh to crazy town. Uh, so one of the things that was often been discussed in my community, and I've seen this discussed around Star Citizen community as an, in, as a whole, is that trading is broken, trading doesn't work, trading isn't fun, and trading has lost a lot of its value. So what we're going to be talking about today has to do with um, what is currently wrong with trading. Like, how does it work now? What's wrong with it? And then we'll move on to what will trading be and how will CIG fix it. The road so to fixing with, the road to fixing yeah, cargo. The, I think the pun the, works. The there, road, you know? yeah. the road to fixing cargo. Mm. To fixing cargo it involves a truck. Um, the cargo road. <laughs> the cargo road. Is this so a really bad time to mention I was hit by a truck when I was a lot younger? But anyway, total side yeah, I was in terrible. hospital for weeks. But, yeah, sorry. Anyway, go ahead. Let's go. Let's go. Let's 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 rein it in. Uh, <laughs> See, this is what happens when I don't, I don't drive. He can be the bad guy. <laughs> yeah, he can be the bad guy. See? Yeah. Okay. So what is, what is trading like right now is the first question we have to tackle. And I'll go over, for those of you who haven't been trading, because there's some people who may have never tried it before, there are two ways you can trade. The one way is box missions, where you get a mission, which is usually to pick up three boxes as of this patch. Um, you go pick up those boxes, then you have to deliver those three boxes to various lockers that um you get to uh, drop it off and you get paid like uh just like nine thousand uec for it um and then the other way is to do commodity speculation trading where you mm -hmm. buy commodities be it laranite be it salvage or scrap be it uh vice or food or medical supplies and then you go and sell that at a place where you can um you can sell it pretty high then uh and the way you do that one is you simply just go buy to go to a place you buy it and then you go to another place and you sell it you don't have any way of of, of knowing where it is though <clears throat> you kind of have to figure out where, where who will buy what um so let's talk about what's wrong with this current approach how it currently works what, um what, what are some of the issues that we that, that, are, that are with this this uh can, can I add to that though? I I also think sure. also missions at the moment are really more tailored at a a smaller ship. I mm -hmm. think they're more like like as you alluded to those single box missions. They're more you know they're not really tailored at say something like that's coming soon. Like what kind of brought this episode on was the Hercules, um, or the mm -hmm. Caterpillar. Um, I, I think that's a part of the discussion too. And obviously, as yeah. more and more things come online, more missions are going to come online. I think I think that hits on one of the things we had we, we had there, which is supply and demand. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. currently, one of the biggest problems is there are large vessels, but those large vessels you can't you struggle to find ways to fill those large ships up, and then go sell them. And so the quests selling, like the quests don't scale to the size of ships too. That would be a part of it too. No, obviously. Yeah. yeah. We don't have larger box mission quests. We don't have like go yeah. go deliver this. 100 SCU quest where it's just a box now. So, yeah. Uh, what, are some, what are some of the other issues you guys, you guys see? Uh, I think a big one is just the low diversity in cargo. You know, we, we don't really see the ability for somebody to put something in their small ship that they can make a ton of money with. Um, it really is just kind of, if you want to make a lot of money, you need to have 
a, a reasonably sized ship and go for the most valuable stuff. Do you and think... I was going to say, you know yeah. those different cargo types they brought in for Xeno Threat. Do you think that they obviously you can't take the one where you've just got to drive the whole way, but like the other two, do you reckon if they brought those two back in and and put folded those into some of the missions, that would at least give a little bit of a diversity? Because we know they've well, already made the them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean that's the plan, I think. But I mean the other yeah. the other question, the other thing is like, right now I, I I'm I'm not current on my current meta. But it it always switches between Laronite and uh, scrap mm. in terms of like that's what you do to make money. There's nothing mm-hmm. else you can do. There's nothing else that's viable. That's that makes you the most money, and uh, so you just you do that. Period. And yep. I think that's what 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 Spado is talking about. It's like there's not other routes. There's no other mm. routes because there's just the one that people use. I, I don't think that, that comes. Go ahead. Go ahead, no, I was just, that goes back to the demand you were talking about. That's because nobody wants the other stuff. They're not going to yeah, pay you yeah. for it. Or what I in the high high volume. They, yeah, they won't pay you more. What I was going to say is, I I don't think that this problem is just limited to cargo. I think it's the whole kind of game in general. We are we're getting to that um, the apex of what they can do with the technology without some of the other fundamental pillars of the technologies coming online. Um, yeah. So like. So, so that that's the, we're jumping a little ahead to the fixing problem, but I think that also comes up with the other dreaded cargo hauler problem, which is the thirty k. The thirty k yeah. is just absolutely ruins it <laughs> because because there's no missions. So, because like as you were pointing out there, uh, execute that like mm. there is no missions for larger cargo haulers. The only way the larger cargo haulers can make money is by speculative uh, commodity trading. So mm. they have to use commodities in order to make money. And that requires a lot of investment. In some cases, like 500,000 UEC to make 100,000 UEC in a run. Mm. So you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're risking, you know, a ton of money for a very small profit. Um, you know, and if, if 30K, you're just done. You just, you just yeah. lost all that money. It's so 30K that, is the real griefer. So that 30K problem really makes it a now versus the final type of thing, like... And and I can hear the developer voice in my head going, but it's yeah. an alpha and all that. But that that yeah. still doesn't fix the problem for people that play the game on a daily basis. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, and the question then becomes from a developer standpoint, do you try and fix that or do you just let people put up with it because you've got so much other stuff to work on? Yeah. So, yeah, so there's, there's definitely some issues there. Um, I think we already talked about low diversity in cargo. We talked about 30K, supply and demand. Um some the of the kiosks. Issues, the, the kiosks. Yeah. Yeah, what, 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 the kiosks just don't work. <laughs> they just don't work yeah. half the time. They, yeah. they're, they're flash. They're using old tech. There's just problems. Um, and, talk about, and the last one, well, I'll let you go and talk about, the, about, about this one there, the tomato, but what is a market tracker? Well, yeah, just the idea that like, even if you wanted to get into cargo, the first thing I think any cargo person, I don't know, I've never driven a, truck full of cargo in real life but the first thing i would do is try and find out who needs what and where and not only got, do we not have the back end hmm? you've got the clothes for it though like that blanket you had on before you've got the truck like, <laughs> yeah. sit down yeah, just, just just wanted yeah. to just wanted, i'm just delivering to say. my lumber <laughs> yeah yeah you're good to go um, not not only not only do we not have like that quantum back end though to create that supply and demand and create the ability for us to go find somebody who needs that cargo we don't have any way of even seeing it um and i don't believe there is a, an app a moby glass app on the uh progress tracker the roadmap that's talking about that unless they put it into the asset manager but i don't think it's, they will it's not in it's not in there but we'll, we'll talk yeah about that. so sorry so sorry to the problems so, 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 I was, so we're talking about the manifest though, but I, I do remember them talking about putting manifests into the Moby Glass at some point. So maybe, yes. maybe it's been delayed or something. But yeah, sorry, I digress. Go ahead. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, let's let, well, let's continue on with this. Like, um, so tomato. These are the problems that CIG that mm-hmm. the trading is face is faced right now. Traders are faced right now, um, based off of what what what, what it's like. Now, yeah, what is the future of trading, and how? And we'll talk about how CIG is going to address some of these issues. So why don't you walk us through what, what, what you think that CIG's, the future of CIG 
future training in Star Citizen will be for us. I can just mm-hmm. see that guy well, from the trailer in uh, Wonder Woman. <laughs> Welcome to the future. <laughs> Sorry. <Go ahead. laughs> Life is good. Life is good. Lumber. Lumber yeah. jack. <laughs> uh, I don't actually. So I'm, I'm actually not huge on cargo hauling. I did it kind of just uh-huh. to stay busy. It's not what I want to do. Uh, and it's not something that I've studied a lot in the game or how they're going to do it. But the way that I see it working is you're essentially just asking, like, what do I think it's going to be, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so obviously you'd start out with um, looking up that supply and demand, finding the market tracker, figuring out what's going on in the system that you're in, who's looking for what materials, and who is selling those materials. Uh, the way I think the way that they did it with Quantum, they were talking about the idea that you know you say you have a manufacturer, Aegis, who makes spaceships. Okay, well they need a lot of aluminum, right? Well, you find a refinery that has a surplus of aluminum because it's near, uh, let's just say Aberdeen. Aberdeen has a lot of miners getting aluminum. So now you know, okay, I have my destination. I have my starting point. You go to the refinery. You get there and you ask for the cargo. You're not just, it's not just going to pop up in your ship, right? So you have commodity timers now. Um, You have the ability to pay to speed up that loading process and then once you lift off and take off, now you have your risk of uh, of attack and different things. You have to pay for an escort. You have to pay for the fuel. You might have to pay for repair. All these other prices that get factored into it that you have to consider when you're looking for that cargo to, to deliver. And then, you know, you get to the location. Now, well, you, you drop it off, you sell it, and you're able to work more easily with an interface that's going to tell you what exactly you're selling how much you're going to get for it and why you got what you did and that's i think sorry i was just gonna say you really really pointed something out to me there where you were talking about like like it's kind of like gambling that part where you're trying to see like if you're looking at one area and you're gambling to see if it's going to be worthwhile when you get there but that's so much better like i'm going back to the 30ks here because if you're gambling and then it like completely they pull the rug out from underneath you i now kind of get where you're coming at from that 30k stuff sorry i know that's a little bit tangenty from what you were saying but um it it, it the, makes it worse because it's, it's like literally yeah. I I gambled and it literally paid off nowhere near at all. Not even I didn't even yeah. break even. I completely got rorted. Um, and, it, and it's not because of something I did. It's because it was the game. The game yeah. screwed mm-hmm. me out of it, yeah. which makes yeah. it so much worse. And, and so one other thing that you mentioned, Paul, was that there are two types of systems for cargo hauling. You have box missions, and you have uh, um just regular you know buy cargo and get it what needs to be done is those two things need to be combined because we need to be able to get contracts from a company that contract is telling us bring this stuff to here we can't always just be bringing stuff because we want to right we got to work for somebody um and the tying of the mission system into the cargo system i think is incredibly important yeah i was going to say that there's that like in the future we're probably going to have three different versions you're going to have a, a version where Aegis is paying you to go pick up the aluminum they've already purchased and and, and uh, give it to their refinery on Magda or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so you're going to get to their factory there. So then you, all you're doing is doing that. And instead of doing boxes, now you're, you're hauling huge cargoes. Yeah. Um, and then there's the, the, the speculative trading we've talked about before, which you went through, which is the whole like you, you have to like analyze risk rewards. You have to pay for different different things. And then there's the in between, which is Aegis needs this 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 aluminum. You know they need this aluminum. They're looking for this aluminum. They will pay you a rate for this aluminum, but you have to buy the aluminum. So you have to find mm-hmm. the aluminum being sold at a certain price to make sure that it would fit the the order that they want and you'd still be able to make money. So it's kind of like the the cross between do this mission and the the full speculation of will i make money just yeah everything. and that and that allows you to then sit in your ship with a trunk full of cargo and just look at the market and be like you know i'm looking for the best buyer i'm looking for whoever's going to give me the most i don't have a destination yet who who wants to buy this stuff and that's a different kind a, of hauling you know i think there's a slightly other part to it that really cargo is going to connect every single profession in the game. And we're not at that point yet. At at the point we've got all these little individual pieces where the cargo kind of just appears and you've got to take it from A to B. But 
when the game actually gets kicking, like that's going to have to be mined by an NPC and then taken by another NPC to the store. And then, you know, it's all going to be interconnected. And literally cargo is the profession that interconnects everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I don't think that could be underestimated. Yeah, that's it's, it's probably, like combat, it's one of those linchpin things. Like I would say even more. Cargo hauling no matter what you're doing. I would say even yeah. more than car- combat, com- com- like because because like cargo can everything can affect cargo, but cargo affects everything. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, and and when you look at it like that, you realize that it, it is fundamentally probably the most backbone profession in the entire game. Like if you like remove cargo course. from if you remove cargo from <laughs> yeah. the uh, sorry combat from the game, a lot of the game still works fine. But if you remove cargo, mm-hmm. nothing works. Yeah, nothing works. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. so, even. Even even prisoner transports for bounty hunting wouldn't work because you still yep. need to have that cargo ability. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. Let's let's go through. Let, you know, we've talked about like what CIG's future is, and that's that's nice because that's that's a that's that's a nice idea. But what is it actually going to be? How is CIG going to get to that point? What are the things that CIG needs to have implemented, and what are what are CIG planning to implement um, that will improve this process? I can start this off pretty quickly, which is... I was going to say, let anyone else go first, because that's fine. Okay. Tomato? No, you can go ahead. Um, The two things I was going to talk about are the things that are coming in the next patch, which is reputation UI and push and pull. Because a lot of people don't really understand that reputation is going to be your second currency. So Mm -hmm. having money is important. Having reputation is as important. So... Being able to have the best prices for aluminum doesn't mean you necessarily will be able to go there and sell that, those prices. You know, you could you could say, oh, wow, uh, you know, uh, Crusader has some really good deals. I can go to Crusader and sell that, that aluminum. But if you don't have good reputation with them, it could be you just won't be able to land. Or they'll just be like, cool, we're going to arrest you because we don't like you. Um, or even worse, your reputation could also affect the prices. They'll be willing to pay more for you because they trust you and they know who you are and you've worked, you've done some, some work for them. So it might yeah. even affect the prices themselves in terms of what they're willing to sell for you. Think about it they, in typical RPG fashion, you know, or they, the, how good your speech is or how, how well your reputation is and that's, that pound will affect it. So. Or, or they know flying drink. You, or, you, or if you've got a really bad lumberjack aesthetic and they just don't like lumberjacks, so they charge you extra, you know? Um, <laughs> or they I mean, love lumberjacks. That you joke, but th- it's that's true. one of the reasons if they want to actually add the that, that kind of stuff into the game, where, like, if you don't shower, if you don't, if you walk up looking like you're about to raid Fort Knox with full full heavy armor and, and massive weapons mm. they may not want to like talk with you or negotiate with you or you might have bad prices but if you show up in like city in your in your lumberjack outfit and uh and and uh and a nice hat then you know they go oh this person is, is reasonable let's talk with them you know <laughs> and, <laughs> and that that'll go further too when we can play alien races and stuff like they might not want to deal with you because you're an alien as and well. then the whole language thing comes into, mm-hmm. into the yeah. picture, and yes, yeah, layers it, it, it on get layers on layers. So, so that we already have reputation, it's going to advance more. But knowing those reputations will be part of that process of where where do I sell and what missions can I get? And uh, the and idea that good. Well, the idea that the reputation isn't just a binary; you're either good or you're bad, but rather, you, you know, it's it's analog. It's based on a lot of different things, and it's based on the separate companies is a big part of that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you, how, did you work with this company that, that that hates this company? So thus you're going to have bad reputation with this company because you worked with this company. Um, mm. You know, uh, uh, did you mess up a mission for this company? Well, then they're going to have lower reputation than this company, and those will all affect the the overall prices and such. Um, and then uh, I'll, I'll talk about the other one, which is object push and pull, which is coming in next next patch. Trolleys, trolleys. I know they're a meme. But trolleys, you, I cannot underestimate the importance of trolleys in, in cargo gameplay because you, they will be the thing you use to move cargo faster than the, the cargo timers would. On a, mm-hmm. on a side point here, I actually think they're continuing the small ship cargo stuff. So um, let me explain. Um, 
that trolley is more for a ship, let's say, like the one in the background, like a um, a, a cutlass, where I would imagine or envision, you guys correct me if you think I'm wrong here, that um, if you were unloading something like a hull E or something that's very large, you would actually, they might even eventually put in fairly large machines that can move that a substantial true. amount of cargo. <laughs> it's called the Argo SRV. Mm-hmm. That's literally what it's designed to uh, You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean like one for yeah. inside. Yeah, yeah. So they might have like a ridiculously long, have you ever seen them at the airports where they, uh, when they unlug the plane, they have that like that little trolley thing that pulls all the, the bags yeah. on them. But that, but it's inside the station. So it's like pulling, like it's a whole bunch of those gravity um, or anti-gravity trolleys. And there might even be a little guy in the golf cart at the front. Like I, I can actually yeah. see that as a thing um, yeah. in the future. Yeah forklifts, um, other things like that as well. So yeah. there's, there's and definitely they've, some... Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say they've shown the art for that for those props. Like you, you go to the Lorville hangar and you can see them sitting around. They're just not usable yet. That, that's kind of what I'm getting at. At the moment, though, they seem more s- like smaller or single use. I'm, I'm trying to extrapolate, like, are they going to make bigger ones for the bigger mm. ships? Because they're going to have a ship. Like, can you honestly see, like, let's say 50... NPCs pushing all individual trolleys, or do you see <laughs> one NPC in a little golf cart pulling a whole train behind him? And I think that's a bit more trolley realistic loading. to yeah, me the than the trolley. Yeah, or or like a, like a like a like a Titan suit, and one NPC in a Titan suit carrying like a big crate that has a bunch of little crates inside of it. Those yeah, sort of, those sorts of things. Yes, uh, and the, the power loader from Aliens. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And these these are things that will one hundred percent be player driven as well, because you know CIG has been been hot on the idea that it's not just going to be NPCs doing things, but they want players to have interaction in, in some of this as well. It may not happen this year, but they are going to be doing things like physicalization of cargo, mm. um, which will means that when they load up your cargo, it will be physicalized um, and so rolling it actually pull it out. Sorry. And rolling it out that way, um, I think it's going to affect more smaller ships before it affects more bigger ships. So to me, a natural way to roll it out would be to do the smaller ones and as the ships get bigger and bigger. So things like the Titan suits, that's probably more medium to large. So I do think that is accurate, Paul. You are going to see that um, step up and, you know, as you go from tier zero whatever tier they go up to, like seven or eight or whatever. How I don't know how high they're going to go, but I, I do think that will be accurate. We'll actually see them unfold it from smallest to largest. Um, yeah. So what are some of the other things that CIG is going to be uh, doing to improve cargo over, over time? Well, you mentioned the, the kiosks before. Um, yeah. We yeah, know they're, they're, they're doing the UI rework at the moment. So that's definitely something. Yep. Cut. Sorry, you're going to say? That's... No, oh, I was just—I was going to say the same thing. The commodity kiosk is the twenty-week uh, sprint. Looks like it's scheduled to conclude in June. That could could definitely go past that, but that falls right in line with the asset manager as well, um, which is key. You know, to obviously the commodity kiosk to seeing what the companies have that you want to buy, but also the asset manager seeing what it is that you have that you've already bought from them. Those two things are absolutely crucial uh, to knowing what you're actually doing with the cargo that you're getting and also just not getting a broken kiosk that too <laughs> it's nice always a plus be able yeah. to use it mm-hmm. um and as, i think that's the I, I i would not underestimate the importance of an asset manager to traders because mm-hmm. it allows what that sort of thing allows with physicalization of cargo including things like inventory uh, where like you have your actual, you buy a commodity and it's in your ship and it's, you can pick it up with a, with a, with like a, um, a, a, a trolley or with, with a tractor beam or something like that. These big crates that you're moving around. Uh, it also means that in the near future, maybe not this year, this is one of those things that's probably in the, in the distant future is being able to buy those things, go to like a base or a hangar that you own and then taking those things and take, removing them and then just storing them in your in, in in a location then you have an asset manager it's like oh uh, uh aluminum oh, we keep using aluminum but aluminum's doing is is doing is just it's probably shot up how much do i have in aluminum oh i've got, I've got like you know 40 seu in aluminum let's just go pick that up and go sell that over to uh, over at the place where aluminum's booming uh, and for, for our english viewers that's aluminium 
Uh, <laughs> um, but but yeah, it's fine. I'm just being an ass. It's fine. But I, I, I but you, you bring also... up. I was just going to say, he brings up a really important point that made me think of the insurance system as well. Because if you're doing manifest of your ship and you don't keep adequate tracking of it and you lose that to a pirate, they may not pay you through your insurance. If you if it's not on the manifest, they may not pay you for it. Yeah. And that you just, yeah, that's, that's, you just mentioned the word that I was going to talk about is they haven't really talked about the manifest in a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that they had plans for one, but I always wonder, is the manifest somehow going to be tied into the asset manager? Are they going to say, hey, you technically own this cargo that you're carrying, so it does show up on your asset manager, or are they going to have a standalone manifest for its ship? You know how they do that thing on really fancy future shows where they just, yeah, have a copy of this. <laughs> that's, that's what I see. Because like um, on the Caterpillar, they have those little decks there for each module that's that that you mm -hmm. manifest and i can just see him going all right i'm transferring the cargo to you and oh here you go by the way here's here's the manifest for this module and then and they put all those together and go here's the manifest for the entire ship bang done yeah they're already, they're not already like this they'll actually, email you, they'll email it like we, we've got in-game email if, but yeah if you see if you see mobile glass in like when you go to mission givers what they'll do is they'll they'll pull up their mobile glass and they'll, they'll do this kind of thing and then they're like oh yeah here's the mission they'll go click click yeah. And they'll, they'll do that motion. So they already have it mocapped, the, the flip mm -hmm. motion. Yeah. So like, yeah, I could see that. Like you just walk up to a, to a, like a, the, the, whoever's in charge of the cargo deck. We need a name for that. Don't we? The send emote. The, send. the minority. <laughs> I don't know what you call effect. it. Yeah. The minority port <laughs> mode. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, so. zero, zero push and pull. We've also seen that already in, uh, Xeno thread. And that was actually quite fun for me that I, I really enjoyed the interaction that was going on. That was kind of a triangle. You had the, uh, people defending you doing it in the ships. So you had your combat people mm -hmm. that had their job there, but then you had people on the other side grabbing it as you were throwing it to them and, and, and you running around and, and grabbing the right colors at the right time and all that type of stuff. So with the tractor beams. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And, and like, let's maximize, let, let's, let's maximize that out. Uh, Titan suits that can, or, or, or as we said, power loaders that can literally pick up something that a human could not. And then, you know, you can see that uh, literally going down the line, push and pull right. as a very basic system um, is going to work into the trolleys. It's going to work into all, all, all those little dynamics and hell, we could see a Titan suit. That's just like a giant um, anti grab like, the SRV, but in a Titan suit. Yeah. It's is essentially what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, just... Yeah. 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 And, and you, you you could have, with zero three push and pull, you also have, allow for zero G transfers. So that allows for things like yep. the whole series, which is not going to be anything but zero G transfers. Yep. Oh boy, mm -hmm. is that going to take some, some time. And so, and that yeah. that kind of ties into salvage. The big part of salvage is going to be just removing yeah. components and stuff and pulling them through space to your yep. own ship. Yeah. Uh, we're, same we're, same we're on the to, same on the crucible. I was going to add that in too. Sorry. Yeah. But yeah. I was going to say back. We're back to the to the whole how how cargo is literally the backbone of the game. Uh, yeah. Gameplay. Yep. It it literally involves everything. Well, even uh, if you're even if you're carrying like a little memory stick in your own inventory, that's a version of cargo in my book like your own personal yeah. inventory is still cargo in my book. Um, yeah. That's one thing I just realized that we kind of don't even have on the notes is the whole thing of the, um, how the, that they, they described recently how the um, transferring of cargo between ships and that's going to work. And um, there's a game that I even showed space tomato really quickly was um, eco. And the way that game works is a lot of, they have stockpiles and they basically work, within distance, you can just transfer it from one to the other. The, the way that Star Citizen is really different from fundamentally from almost any other game I've ever seen is, yeah, you can transfer it from one stockpile to the other. So in this case, let's say it's a ship to the other ship or from a ship to a station. But then if there is a shit ton of cargo, you've actually got to have an NPC or someone physically then come and transfer it from one to the other. And so it's actually like a physicalized transference. And that's what really starts sets Star Citizen apart from any this other person. game i've seen yeah. down here in the background yeah. behind me yeah that's that's yeah, what they're that doing dude who actually yeah. literally he's like he's doing the, the rights and stuff yeah, yeah. He's doing the, he's doing the, the, the minority report for flip yeah yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so, yeah. uh, and how how CIG is going to be doing like like asset tracking, for instance, allows for that because asset tracking is something on their end that allows them to track not only what's in your asset manager, you know, but it's also allows for everything else. This is one of those tech, mm. those background tech things where they're like they're allowed to, they're 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 going to be tracking. <laughs> Um, quanta issues. They'll be tracking where people are going, how that, how, uh, like what what the, the supply and demand is for everything, where everything is in the universe. That that's that asset tracker of it, like is is important, and it's something that's on, it's on the it's on the roadmap to be worked to be worked on. Yeah, this year. yeah. If you, I mean, it, a proper inventory system is <laughs> any game you play. It's super basic part of the game that you just constantly are inside of. So. And that can be really I mean, bad. It's, 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 like, like it let's be, be yeah. honest, we've yeah. played some games where they're absolutely shocking. You know, you've got to be able to, like, like just the most basic level, and we've seen this in videos that they've done already for SE, but sorting. There are some games that don't allow you to sort. You know, you, you yeah. um, some games you want to be able to do it alphabetically or by type. So you want to be go, I want to put all my metals together. I want to be able to put all my food together. And you can't. It's just all over the shop. And, and we're talking about, like, a ship that's the size of a whole E, I'm imagining there's going to be a fair bit of cargo. Not like, like, Holy crap. like you see what I mean? Like, like it's going to be a thing. Like logistics Thousands are of really going to, I can hear yeah. Seer in the background yelling at me going, ah! but the, <laughs> yeah, there is <laughs> the, the, the logistics are going to be huge in this game. And, and, and I don't think cargo is just as narrow as what we see it right now. And it's definitely going to expand and multiply as more and more systems are pushed into um, the game itself. Um, and I think that yeah. video that he did a couple of weeks ago with, um, it was the Calling All Devs. I think it was only like one or two weeks ago. I'll, I'll find it and yeah. put it in the it description like below. Weeks, yeah, yeah last, I'll put it in the description yeah, below. Um, but he actually details out how they're actually going to unfold that system. And he uses lots of fancy words. But he, he does go into that they are going to literally make it so it is like stockpiles, and then eventually they're going to get into the physicalization and stuff like that. So you can see that the system is going to come online in parts and get more and more complex. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, and, and, I, and... Ahead, well, I was working on uh, my monthly report video, um, and I was writing the script for it and thinking about some of, or no, actually, I was writing the weekly report uh, video that I just did. And I, I liked this last weekly report because it was looking at a, a, a feature that's been here for a while, but that mm. they are building on. And you were able to see that as they build these other components, for instance, or components of bad word, as they build other features into the game, say subcomponents, suddenly that makes mining bigger, right? Cargo is going to get that with everything that's added. As they improve mining, cargo gets improved. As they improve yep. salvage, cargo gets improved. Piracy, cargo gets improved. It's the same thing you were talking about. It's all linked. Yeah. Yeah. The pun. I was, I was just gonna back the pun, you're in for the long haul. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. You're in for the long haul. <laughs> anyway, I, I was gonna say it's like what, what, what we what we like the future of cargo, I think one one of the things that's encapsulating is that the future of cargo is the future of the game. Um oh, yeah. so mm. if if just just things like physicalization will change everything because yep. the prospect, your saddlebags, they're going to be physical. You're going to have yep. to move them. Now, mm -hmm. do I think they're going to actually render in uh, 14 tons of rocks inside your, your saddlebag? No. no, no, no. But the quanta will be there and there'll be some sort of like rigid structure that they'll show for halfway full, total full, that kind of stuff. But um, if they let you open the, the top of the saddlebag and look in, you might see the the top of it yeah, the top maybe of it. I, I don't know i don't know how but, how far they're going to go with it but they but, have said you're going to be able to yeah. open cargo so yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll they'll definitely be some some things and and i there'll, there'll be some some uh some like like i don't think you'll ever open up like a whole d's like big cargo uh containers and then inside see like a billion potatoes i don't i don't think you're gonna actually render out a billion potatoes in there but i think you'll see <laughs> boxes inside those boxes and then maybe some smaller containers inside those as well mm -hmm. and then if you open up those containers instead of having opening it up and being like hey there's the space potatoes what you do is you go there and you click the little inventory button and it'll pop up and be like hey mm -hmm. everything on this side is potatoes look at all of these potatoes you can now put mm -hmm. pull out a single potato from this big box oh, if you want so it, many it's fries going to be in a, <laughs> it's going to be in a, in a box inventory rather than in like 
Like you can reach mm. in and pull it out. I, with I, I know I keep bringing up Eco, but Eco is a really good smaller version of this because in those stockpiles that we talk about in Eco, they are physicalized. If you actually look into the stockpile, like at, while you're standing outside it, the stockpile is literally just like a piece of rope that kind of like just... But if you put wood in there, the wood will stack up in there. If you put rocks in there, it'll then have wood and rocks. And and so you that, that is the closest game I can find to... Um, what I'm expecting on a on a basic level from Star Citizen. So um, if you yeah. even don't like the game, you might be able to get someone to show you how the cargo works. If you're really into cargo, that that would be like, if you want a preview of the future. Um, that that's what I'd go look at. Uh, and the last big thing in there that I'll talk about, and then we'll wrap up, is uh, commodity uh, market trader. This is something that's not on the roadmap. But it's something you talked about. It's been on the roadmap in the past, which is the idea that you could. As Space Mando said at the very beginning, a place you can go and say, who needs what? Who is selling what at what price at this moment? So that's kind of like an in, oh. in-game eBay. Yeah, sort of. Essentially. It's an in-game... Market. I would say it's, it's like, like, a, like a stock yeah, market. Yeah, like a stock market, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, and what I mean of, is... You know, you see the... So what I mean is you can go in and you can look and see who's selling and buying what, Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. I call it an eBay, but buyers, yeah, I, I, yeah, eBay is only really buying, yeah. isn't it? So yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah you, you guys are right, but you get my point. Yeah, so it's some way you, you can, can kind of you can see the placeholder of that in in Lorville, mm, which you know yes, I really yeah. expect honestly for it to be displaying real information at some point. Yeah, yeah. I'd agree, and and it also does uh, beg the questions: Are they are they going to physicalize that, or are you going to need to have an app that connects to that place? So like. Like, how physicalized are they going to get? Are they going to, like, when you get into the system, do you have to connect to... So when you come into Stanton, do you connect to the Lawville one or do you connect to... Because I also know they have one at Art Corp as well. Does that mean they're going to have, um, like... And you remember they've talked about drones sending information through wormholes? If you're in a system that doesn't have that, do you have to wait for the information to go via drone... Yes. And back. Are you wonder. getting delayed information? Like, you yeah. can start to see layers it's... and layers and layers, as as uh, yeah. Space Domain was saying before. Just rather yeah. complex. Yeah, I mean, this is this is going to more theory crafting territory, but I would imagine that what CAG would do is you you're getting the latest information based off of what Quanta has said told you the latest Quanta transmissions for that price in that system. Yeah. So you will, and you, the closer you get to that system, the more recent the information is going to be. And when you get into the system, once you can connect to the network and that system, it will give you all of that information for your market tracker app on your mobile glass. So that brings us back to ownership. full circle to that gambling thing I was talking about. And you could get screwed over by that too. Like, oh, yeah. it's, and you know, it's a dollar, you know, it's on the dollar. Oh shit, now it's down to five cents on the dollar. Damn, I'm, I got yeah. screwed. And that, that whole transferring of that information, the communication of that information is, is something that's completely different talk, but uh, is going to probably factor into how they convince people to not be using other forms of VOIP when they're in the game, you know, finding a way to get people to understand that sort of information through the means of the game, rather than just say, dropping a message on discord to your friend who's in another system and telling him the price in your system. Yeah. I think the other part though is travel time. Uh, space so like yeah your your mate so say say you're in the system and you tell me oh at the moment it's this, such and such and i travel all the way there but by the time i get there it i reckon it would have changed anyway so i think that negates it a little bit but definitely mm -hmm. that would remove the the lag factor yeah. um i don't think there yeah. is any way they can police that sadly personally i, I think a lot of this a lot of this is for, for keeping this in the discretion the stuff that we we're talking about at the very beginning is stuff that's mm -hmm. coming out this year the stuff that we're talking about yeah. right now, we have no idea. <laughs> it's not even yeah. the map or in the progress tracker. It's, yeah. it's stuff that they've been talked about in the past, but this is this is this is like the, the distant future. So, but it does future. it does show yeah. the tears. It does show that, that this system mm -hmm. is going to get more and more tier. complex, and it, it it spreads out and it's going to affect everything. So basically, what I mean, we've concluded is cargo hauling is a virus, and it's going to affect everything. It's the pandemic it, of Star Citizen. Uh, we're all doomed. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, as as Astropub said, you know, the disappointing part of all that is that this is going to take a while. And, you know, we're sitting here in 2021, but we're still talking about stuff like this taking a while, which which sucks. Um, 
but it's the way it is. Yeah. And it's nice to look at, it's nice to look and finally see that some of these really basic additions that we've been wanting are scheduled to be implemented this year. Things like the actual yeah. inventory, the UI, the reputation, all that kind of stuff. That's that's nice to be getting. That's all going to pick up speed though as they, they wrap up Squadron 42. So I, I, I can tell you now- and as a Cortec. Yeah, a lot of, yeah, going back to where we started. Yeah, um, a lot of those things- I'm not saying this specifically, but a lot of things are just sitting on there on the sidelines waiting for things to be switched on or the puzzle piece to be moved into position so you can connect a whole other piece of the puzzle. Um, it's all about connecting the pieces together. And they're not when, – when you build a game, it's not like you, it's this linear line. It's literally you've got your, your, your quest mission team out there doing this. You've got your – ship mission team out doing this and they all start to connect to each other and those roads get wider and wider and more and more and content get fills in and you get to see this full picture it is literally like a jigsaw puzzle you are literally like mm -hmm. filling it in and it's and, and and the speed that as you finish the jigsaw because you know where things go it increases and it gets faster and faster and so basically right up until the end it really does look like like it's literally that last 10 percent where everything starts to come together yeah. All so right. That's the future of cargo. <laughs> In a um, nutshell. A big nutshell. I think we'll wrap, wrap up there then. So I'll sign us off with um, hashtag Jagan in the comments if you're looking for an F7A upgrade. I think they're going to be about $350 at the moment. Um, and um, a Super Hornet um, on behalf of Eric Jaden. And I've forgotten Jane's last name or Eric's last name. Um, but yeah, his mate held onto the ship for him. Unfortunately, Eric has passed away. So we're um, uh, going to give that away. And he's also a big supporter of the channel. So that's how that happened. Um, I'll let Paul do his thing with his fancy voice and sign us off. with <laughs> The su su subscribe and, and Patreon and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, hey, These guys are way better than I am. But anyway. Thank you for watching us here at the Info Runners. Make sure that you're subscribed to Space Tomato up there as well, as well as myself at... Uh, so yep. Space Tomato on, on YouTube, and tw uh, it's, it's the Space Tomato. Space Tomato, tomato on YouTube. On, it's and Space Tomato, tomato Gaming. And, and Space, space, space tomato, tomato Gaming on Twitch. And so, me, no, I changed it up. He changed, changed it up. It. It's okay. Space he Tomato Gaming on Twitch now, yeah. Mm. <laughs> space, tomato, space Tomato Gaming on Twitch and Space Tomato on YouTube. Um, the Astro Pub on Twitch and YouTube. Um, we both stream live on Twitch as well as, uh, like right now, we're, I'm streaming live on Twitch for, for, yep. for, for showing you the whole process of how these are made. Um, and of course, if you're watching this on, on Info News, please do subscribe, like, if you have any questions for us, your own thoughts and, 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 um, and, and things on, uh, cargo running in the future, go ahead and put them down below. It helps us out. We'll come by and, and uh, hang out and talk with you all about that. Uh, and if you really, really like this and you want to support us, we have a Patreon. So, uh, if you go to our, our, our Patreon, you can help support us for just a few more months. We have uh, we put up some names here at the end to, to kind of show that. You can also come see how the sausage is made, help give us episode ideas, lots yep. of cool cool perks for being a Patreon. Um, all on Discord, and, uh, too. I don't. Or, as well. All on Discord. Yep. On our Discord, yeah. Um, He's so, been Space Tomato. He's I been have. Strip Hub, and I've been executed. He was. And we'll catch you in the next one. See you in the black.